Hi, this video is about arch support and flat feet. First, you probably have arches, most people do. And if you have any degree of arch, you may have heard of the, the wet footprint test, where you put your, you know, depending on how much contact your foot makes with the ground, you might have a high arch, in which case you might need a lot of arch support or no arch support, depending on who the salesperson is. And if you have a very low arch, they say, oh, you need a motion control stability shoe and all these prescriptive things. And it turns out that's just based, that's just all made up, not based on reality, not based on any evidence. Finally, uh, several years ago, the military in the United States and in the UK did a couple of large scale tests with runners where they had one test group of runners uh, take the shoes they're supposed to have, according to the manufacturers, the stability, the pronation, and, the, and cushion, and so forth. And that, and then another group that could just take whatever felt most comfortable and switch and just use whatever shoes they wanted. And the ones with the most motion control shoes had the most injuries. So we've learned that you don't need motion control, you don't need arch support. When I was eight years old, I was pulling the little uh, foam biscuits out of my shoes because I was born with shoes with feet like this. So if you have incredibly flat feet like this, that's what the rest of this video is about. If you, if you have arches, use whatever shoes are most comfortable. But for most of us flat footers, we're gonna have to modify our shoes. Now I've got a bunch of shoes here to show you how I modify. These three shoes I don't modify at all. These are my racing flats by On, a Swiss company, and they're nice and flat and they have great rebound here under the forefoot. So I use these when I wanna go out on a fast run and don't have to modify them at all. They're a pretty minimalist shoe. This is the Escalante by Ultra. Now I have a bunch of Ultra shoes you'll see more of, and this Escalante, I don't have to modify it at all. In fact, one of the ways to think about a running or a sports shoe is that you should run with no shoes at all on an infinitely large uh, yoga mat. So think about if you had a, a, a long yoga mat that's very thin, that might be for speed, for getting the most out of the, the, the energy you put into it. But if you want the most comfort and possibly for a longer run or trail running, you'd want, you'd want a thicker yoga mat to run on. And that's the theory behind this particular shoe here, the Escalante by Ultra. It's just a flat shoe that anyone can run on. You can have arches and run on a shoe with no arch support. And it's good. It's a very, it's a very popular shoe from Ultra. Now, this shoe, this is my Gore-Tex uh, winter boot. This is by Mammoth. And again, I don't have to modify this boot, which is great because I've spent a lot of time with boot fitters and hacking away at various boots to try to get the arch support out. And this Mammoth boot uh, gives me a, a, just the flat footbed I need to be comfortable all day. And now the shoes that I do modify, and this is the Ultra uh, Torin 4 Plush, because I love the midsole in this shoe. It's nice and cushy. I walk around in the shoe all day, but as you can see, I have modified the crap out of it. I get a set of scalpels, box of scalpels from uh, Amazon. They don't cost much. I snap them in half to get them inside the shoe to work on them. And then as you can see, I hack away at the midsole and try to get material out under my foot. I also have spent a lot of time on this one. In fact, uh, I have overdone it, uh, but now the shoes are super comfortable. I just can't wear them uh, in the rain. These shoes are only about eight weeks old, uh, but I've really modified them inside and here to remove material to get them to go flat. Also on this shoe, which is, again, I really like the shoe, but you see how it has an interior sort of support system on the midfoot, and I just removed it over here. I used a scalpel and I just took it out. I hacked it out of this side because uh, it was just too much for me underfoot. And now these shoes are super comfortable and I wear them just my everyday running around town shoes. Uh, the Torin 4 Plush uh, with, a, with quite a lot of work on them. And these are my normal running shoes. They're incredibly light. This is the Duo shoe by, uh, by Ultra. And again here, this is an amazingly light pair of shoes. I have just used the scalpel to remove the midsole material underfoot. You, you do it as much as each foot needs. My left foot needs more. My left foot is, is 
flatter. <laughs> so I take more material out here and uh, it feels great. This is my shoe that I can run six miles in and feel really good. And then for around town, I have a beautiful pair of, of more dressy shoes in, in uh, Deerskin by Oliver Sweeney from London. And this is a shoe that I, they, you know, they have a very, sometimes they have a steel shank in a lot of these shoes. And I've put in a leather heel cup that was modified by a, a guy with a grinder to really taper it down as it got toward the middle. And it's only about two millimeters, maybe two and a half millimeters at the back. And then it's very, very thin. It's less than a millimeter here. And then he glued it in so that I walk around town with these and have super comfortable shoes for wearing all day. And these are my rain shoes, a beautiful pair of North Face shoes with much more stiffness and structure. And this is a pair that I've drilled. So, so uh, I've done this quite a bit to other shoes, but you just take a, a drill with a fairly small bit and you drill out material in the midsole to remove material so that it squashes down underfoot. You could do it as much as you can. It's not easy actually to get a lot of holes in there. Obviously you don't want to go through uh, anywhere because that'll take away the waterproofness that you got these sh expensive shoes for. But I did some drilling and then I just used my scalpel and removed a bit of material here under, under the, where I don't have an arch. And then this goes right back in. And one thing you can, you don't have to worry about the stitching or anything here on any of these shoes. You just, you just hack away until you get what you want. Uh, and now I have a great pair of shoes that I've worn uh, trekking and uh, traveling. Uh, and they're great in case it rains. Finally, I want to show the ski boots I have and how I've modified them. Because I've been skiing since I was four years old and I've been through a lot of boot fitters and a lot of work with stretching and pulling boots and heat guns and grinding and I finally have a solution that I can do myself. Now first, uh, almost no matter what foot you have, you will benefit from a custom footbed from a good experienced uh, boot fitter. You know, you can try it without, but if you have a little pain at the end of the day or you're tired of standing on them, go to a custom footbed. And if you have flat feet, you're gonna do that for sure. This boot is a 2018 boot from Solomon called the X-Pro. The problem with people like me and perhaps like you who have very flat feet is right in here. Most boots are quite concave in here. This is where they design the arch in and that we don't want. This particular boot has material that is right in this area can stretch. So you put it in the oven, you, you take out the liner, you put the shell in the oven for about 20 minutes. You take it out with a pair of gloves, you, you put in the liner and you get in the boot and buckle it up. And as you buckle it, you'll feel it stretch right in here. In fact, I, I wore, I, I slipped in a bit of extra firm foam right in this area between my foot and the liner. And then I buckled it and yeah, it stretches in here to conform to the shape of the foot inside. And I did it in two passes because you can't unstretch. So you're gonna do it the first time you know, maybe about 80% of the way. And as you buckle, you'll feel all this material start to move. And it sure does. Boy, it really has given me this area of room for the volume of my foot and the, uh, the navicular area of my foot to be so much more comfortable. So the second time I, the first time I did it, it was pretty good. And the, the second time I put it back in the oven and stood up in it again and let it cool off. And boy, these shells, I can, I can ski in all day. This is not a competition fit. This is a comfort fit. Last but not least, uh, you'll notice that I don't have the silly straps on these boots. Almost, I haven't seen a pair of boots in years that don't have a top strap. That's something you might use if you have very stiff racing boots, perhaps. Uh, but you don't need it. So they usually come riveted and you take yourself a nice sharp drill bit, not a regular wood bit, but this is a tungsten carbide bit. And you can drill the rivet right out. Uh, it doesn't take very long. The steel will melt under your drill. And then uh, you just take off the strap and throw it in the trash. You don't need the stupid strap. It gets in the way and you have a nice clean looking boot that is easier to ski. This is a pretty easy to modify by yourself pair of boots. In the past, 
I've had to go to boot fitters and they've done lots of machines and presses and he, any boot will heat up and stretch if you heat it enough and do enough damage to it. But this boot you can do at home uh, with just simple tools that, that most of us have. Um, reducing the cost and giving us all a more comfortable skiing experience for people with flat feet. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'd be interested in your tips and tricks and suggestions for how you hack your boots, your equipment, your footwear, uh, so we can all have a better experience doing sports and even just walking around town every day on shoes that aren't made for us, the people with flat feet.